is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent, how excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent, how excellent is your name, O Lord. O Lord, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name. O kini ma fi son ure re baba, baba, kini ma fi son ure re omo u omo kini ma fi son ure re e mi mi mo o kiki da ope Kadibo Jesu Christi Buka Mo Konguro Minu A Ninyo A Ye Ti Yo Fo Lo Kale Rigbala Beke Re Le Beke Le Se Beke lele buju resoke. Beke lele don anu rewo. Sha beke lele Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let us have a seat before God. We need, I think, we need to wait until all hallelujah is done before we start putting the cross at the door. I know by the time we begin to have more and more people, they will want to come in before that. I pray that God bless us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today is an exceptional lesson. And I want us to pay deep attention. Can you look at somebody and say, pay deep attention? Hallelujah. Because this happens to be an analogy of a spiritual teenager. And what that means is it's coming from somebody that does not believe that is at the apex of his spiritual growth. And I believe we are still all growing. May God help us grow in the name of Jesus. And the theme is this. We rebel and God restores. We rebel and God restores. Can we say that? And God restores. I pray that God will restore us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when I was growing up. And I began to hear the voice. Of God through preaching. Through prophets. Through many men of God. That were dishing out the sermon. And sometimes when we go to seminar. I begin to come to an assumption. That God is a very harsh God. Hallelujah. I begin to come to an assumption that 
it seems this God is harsh. Because most of the understanding I was getting then is this. If you fail in one part, you've already failed in all. And little of this sin can never come near God. So God, to me, is like once you fail one, then you have already lost the love of God. Hallelujah. Does anybody feel like that sometimes? But today we will understand that that is not actually true. That is an half truth. And I pray that God give us understanding in the name of Jesus. You know, when I look at so many rules that we have, especially in the Christendom, and then when you add the ones we have in Celestial Church of Christ, you put it with it. Then, you know, it's a lot of rules. And from time to time, as humans, we would fail one. Because in every woman is a rebellious act. Just like that of Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. But then came a day that somebody was ministering and now was talking about the parable of the prodigal son. And when I heard that and I went back into my room and reread that, given asking the Holy Spirit to minister to me, then I understand that the love of God for anyone does not diminish. Hallelujah. The love that God has for you, it will never go away. The love that God has for me will never go away. But do you know what can go away? The love that we have for God. Hallelujah. Are we here with me? If you are here, shout hallelujah. And that is why God is using the analogy of today. Using something because if I want to explain anything to anyone and I begin to speak in tongues, mommy, no one will understand me. But if I can use something that you know to give you the understanding of something that you don't know, then you might be able to understand the things that you don't understand before, right? Hallelujah. So that was why God is giving us Hosea chapter 10. And I'm going to tell you a quick rundown of the analogy there. There's a man of God, a prophet. It's not a priest, it's a prophet. That God asked to go and marry a promiscuous woman. And God already told him that this person that you want to marry will never be faithful to you. And he went ahead and obeyed God's rule and married that promiscuous woman and once you know even let's say you're promiscuous and then you get married if you still go back to that act that that act becomes adultery so this woman did not stop the act of being promiscuous so this woman even as being married will still go out and practice adultery go in with another man as many as she wants. But this man, Hosea, would always draw her back to him with the same love that he asked for her in the very beginning. Hallelujah. When you read some old books, you get to understand that Hosea would give her gold, whatever that he can lay his hands on. He gives it to this woman just to make sure that she is comfortable. But every time when it's all done, this woman will still go out to all of these things outside. They had the first child. They had the second. They had the third. Even Ozia himself knew that maybe for adventure, none of these children is his because if you are sleeping around, you don't even know sometimes know who the father is. Hallelujah. I want you to just get this understanding and it came to a time after the third child that this woman decided that you know what I'm done and she left Hosea but when she left she was completely lost this time around she did not come back 
She got lost so much that she became a tool that people use in slavery. She became a slave to her act. That now she got to the level, they call it in America, they say pimping. She, she got being pimped around. And it got to a level that when she lost her value, because it does not matter how good looking a woman is or how good looking a man is, it's going to get to a level that all those good looking will be gone. Hallelujah. So it got to a level that she's no more enticing to any person. And so they decided to now sell her in slavery. Guess who came to pay for her? Hosea. Nobody could offer a silver, one silver for a person. Nobody. And this man was willing to offer 15. A bali and a bali aliyav. I want to believe the food that this man has in the house was what he has to add to make sure that the payment is complete. Hallelujah. So as to have this woman back. And when, every time he has this woman back, he will tell this woman, stay with me. Don't become another man's property. But she would not listen. But this time around, after, she, after he had bought her back, nothing was heard of this woman again. Hallelujah. If you are that man, will you buy her back? If you are that man, will you buy her back? Now, Christ is calling the Israelites when God took them out of Egypt, he took them with iron hands, destroyed their enemy, brought them to Canaan. They had more than enough. They had everything needed to survive as humans. But what did they do? They still go away from God. Every time God would pull them back when they're gone astray. And what would they do again? They still go away from God. Until Christ came. Even when Christ came, Christ died and they still did what? They will still go away from God. That is the story of myself and you. Hallelujah. Imagine your life from the beginning, from the time that you were given back to till now. Who has sustained you? Who has protected you? Who has healed you? Who has made all those provisions? And even with all the things that God has done for you and myself, we still do what? we still rebel against God. One thing that I want you to have an understanding about is this. When that man paid that 15 and those produce, the bellies, nothing was heard of the woman again. There is a level that you will get to in rebelliousness that nobody would want to do anything with you again. Even God. The love does not go away. Let us understand that. The love is constantly there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The love is constantly there. It's like I have my children. All of my children I love. But when they do something wrong, what do I do? Chastise them. Some parents would get to the level that they would denounce these children. Some is because of their heart. And what was happening throughout all this time? Christ is calling us back. Just like Hosea was pulling her back. And each time she would go back to her old self. Just like we would go to our old self. When they tell us, don't lie. We will not lie for a day or some days. And after that, 
will lie. Even some parents are the ones that teach their children how to lie. When somebody comes around them, knocking on the door, they'll be the one to tell, who is that? They say that it's, it's the shepherd. Oh, it, it, just open the door and tell the shepherd, I am not around. Hallelujah. And then when the child grows up, and then the child begins to lie to the parents, the parents will be mad. Now, the question is, where did the child get it from? Hallelujah. I want you to think about the love that Christ has for you. That even with all the things that you have done from the time of birth, the lying, the adultery, fornication, everything that you have done, Christ still loves you. He's still calling you. He's still drawing you there. But if it gets to the case of Goma, the wife of Hosea, and to the level that nothing is done again, then the only thing left is judgment. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Let us open to the word of God today. Hosea chapter 10. Because now we know that Christ loves us. Because even Romans 8, uh, 5, 8 said, before we were born, Christ has already died for us. Yet, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, even before, you know, Christ has already paid, you know what year Christ paid that debt for us. And the debt can never be taken away. It's done. That love is constant. That grace is constant. But the thing is this. Even as much as God loves you, even as much as God loves me, how much do you love him? Does your love go in and come out? Is your love, does this just show up whenever you are in the church? Does your love just show up whenever God is satisfying you with some good things? Does your love just show up whenever you, uh, you're getting something great from God? You know, we have a hymn in Celestia, Muromo, Ewulati Jesu, in 538. Emiko ni fewu no sile why to se befewu no sile kemi ba le ri gbala lo se fewu sile kemi ba le ri bukun lo se fewu sile kemi ba le ri wosan lo se fewu sile kemi ba le ri ye lo se fewu sile we most of us are hanging to Christ because of what we want to get in fact today can somebody open it in english hallelujah so that it wouldn't be that in fact today I am clinging. Many are clinging to that grace robe of Jesus. We are saying we are not going to let off this great robe. Because what? So that we can receive healing. That's the purpose. So that we can have blessing. Uh -huh. So that I can find salvation. So that I might have life. So let's say if they take all those four things out, then many of us will not even cling to the robe of Jesus. Many, if a little things occur in our life, we begin to say, why me, why me, why God, why me? Somebody will step on your toe in the church and you, because of that, not come before God. Somebody will say something to you and for that you will swear by everything that you don't even want to have anything to do with that person. Now imagine if God should... Look to the put all the wrongs that you've done and wants to use that to judge you. Where do you think you will find yourself? Hallelujah. So the love of God is constant. But what about your love to him? Let us read Odia 10. Let us read about 12. These are the things that we need to do. Verse 12, please, somebody. To yourself righteousness. So, God is telling us through his word today that the thing that you need to do is to sow to yourself righteousness. Not sow to anybody's righteousness. People don't even understand. Whatever that you do, you're doing it for your own self. You see, when people come to the church and say, nah, with all the things I did for the shepherd, I smile. Because the shepherd is a nobody. God is everything. If you do, you're doing it for God. If you don't do, you don't do it for yourself. Even if you are not doing it for God, you're doing it for yourself. So, he's telling us, sow for yourself what? Righteousness. Just sit down for a minute. 
Yeah, but not where you got to. The question that I have for you is this. What are you sowing? Just look at from January till now, even with this pandemic. What have you sown into your own life? What have you sown into other people, people's lives? Hallelujah. Did you sow righteousness? Did you sow love? Did you sow kindness? Did you sow peace? Did you even sow any good prayer at all? Or were you sowing gossips? Were you sowing backbiting? Were you sowing hatred? Were you sowing evil? What were you? Just ask yourself because every of this is a planting. Our thoughts become action. Action becomes patterns and patterns becomes habits and habits become life. Everything we do are steps towards a road. But towards which road? Is it the road to God or the road to the evil one? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is saying to you today, so what? So what? Are you sowing righteousness? What is the purpose of sowing righteousness? You know, all of this, when I was looking at this greatness of God, I don't see the reason why any of us should be here, if not for his greatness, if not for his love. If not for his love. He keeps pulling us back. We would go, he would pull us back. And he's saying, just sow righteousness. That is the only thing that Hosea was asking Goma. Pull her back. So just sow righteousness. Stay. Everything is here for you. The love that you need, the care that you need. But some of us still want something better out there. I don't see anything in life that is better than God. I don't see anything that is better than Christ. If you see that, please let me know. Hallelujah. But we just want to stay because we receive him. Once we don't receive for a second, we do what? We run. We rebel. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. And let us go. Please keep reading. Reap in mercy. When you sow righteousness, what are you going to reap? In mercy. mercy. Sit down. When you sow righteousness, you will reap mercy. If you don't sow righteousness, you will not reap mercy. So which means if you sow unrighteousness, you are not going to get love back. That is what many of us don't even understand. We want it to be me, me, me. If it is not me, then it's nobody. Even when they're trying to say, okay, let us make it a we, you say, no, it has to be I in the front, then every other person. And if it, that is not possible, then we get mad. We are always trying to choose our place with God. We always want to run it with God. God is saying to somebody today, so righteousness. Can you say so righteousness? And once you sow righteousness, you will reap mercy. And I pray that God's mercy will find us in the name of Jesus. But how do we reap mercy? And the reason why I'm bringing this question is this. Sometimes people want to do good. Sometimes people actually, they want to do good. But because their foundation is already crooked, the foundation is bad. If you have a very bad spirit, if your heart is corrupted, there's no way you will be able to sow righteousness and reap mercy. Because every time you want to sow righteousness, you are putting a condition that is destroying the righteousness. Hallelujah. Are you with me? If you have a corrupt mind, a corrupt heart, because if you read the book of um, Matthew, I don't even want us to read it. Matthew 13, where it was the, the parable of the sower of that seed. The parable of the seed. 
And Christ was talking about different kinds of ground. And he gets to a place of a stony ground. Do you know that if you have a fallow ground, a ground that no, nobody, somebody has left for years, and you try to plant into that land, it's possible to reap corruption. Am I lying? And because I remembered when I was young that we would plant cassava, plant yam, and plant all this, we would have to use, we don't have all this machinery that they have here. You have to use your cutlass to first of all cut the grass and then use your hoe. You rake it and then use your hoe to make ridges, to till that soil so that you can be able to plant. And then your planting will be good. But if you don't do all that, your planting will be a waste. So many of us here, can you go on and read please? Talking about, are you supposed to have your Bible too? Huh? Break up your fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Yes, 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 hold off. Remember that we're stopping at the fallow ground. Hallelujah. Sidama. Why do you have to break up your fallow ground? If you don't till your soil, you cannot get a great harvest. Our soil is our heart. It's our indwelling. What kind of spirit do you have in you? Because whatever that you have in you is the one that is controlling you. Hallelujah. How is your heart? Your your How is your heart? Because if you have a very corrupt heart and you have the intention to do good, it will not work. Because let's say you want to help A now. Then you have to make a bargain because your heart is corrupt. If I do this to you, will you do this back to me? And for you to reap in mercy, your righteousness has to grow. And if you're planting in a corrupt act, your righteousness cannot grow. So you can't be mercy. And that is why he's telling us in Hosea 10, 12 that you need to break up your fallow ground. Some of us are stubborn. Some of us are just crooked. We would act so right before people. We would act so good before people. But once we get to the back, we are something else. You come to church, you are a saint. You go outside, everybody knows you are the devil. Even if they tell some people at your place of work that you are a Christian, they will argue till Jesus will come. Hallelujah. I have a friend at my place of work. The day he told me he was a Christian, I had to go back to the dictionary and check what the definition is to be a Christian. Because every act of his does not even move towards that. Many of us are expecting a blessing. We're expecting. That blessing is, did not go anywhere. It's like the love of God. That blessing is there. Waiting. But your planting is what will bring out that mercy, that blessing, that greatness. But when you begin to plant with a bad attitude, you plant with a bad character, you plant with a bad pattern, just because of yourself, you want to enrich yourself, you want to be known, you want to be glorified, you want to take the glory of God, you want a situation by it is just me. You can never get the blessings from God. You can get the blessing from man, not the blessing from God. Hallelujah. So can you look at someone that said, break up your fallow ground. That is what we need to do. Break that attitude of hatred that you have. Break that attitude of jealousy that you have. Break that attitude of hate. You know, I don't, it's only in our culture that you will inherit somebody's hatred. Because my daddy did not like him, I don't like him. Because my mommy is not talking to him, I will not talk to him. That is inherit, inheriting somebody's hatred. Many people in life would hate you just because of what somebody told them. They did not come to ask you. They did not come to inquire. They don't even care about knowing the truth. They just want to believe the lies. And they're expecting 
to reap in mercy. Many people ask children that started in the church, they took them to the church. And because they made them mad at the church, they left the church. Now the children have lost the church. Now they want to bring them back. It's impossible. Because they did not, you know, your planting, your heart does not, it does not regulate. We need, we need to think. Hallelujah. We need to make a minute. Break up. Let's break up those acts. We all know what we do that is not right. Some of us is disrespectful. We don't have respect for anybody. Some of us is, our worship is not complete. Break that fallow ground. Break it. And you know, when all of this machine treads on a hard ground, if the ground should speak, mommy, what would the, the ground saying? It would be yelling. Am I lying? A hard ground, when you use those machines to, to break it, if the heart has a voice, it will be a, a, a loud cry. And because we as people, if we are to make the changes that God wants us to make, it's going to hurt us. That is why we don't want to make that change. That is why many that are committing adultery don't want to change adultery because if they stop adultery, there are some things that they are going to lose. That's why people that are lying want to continue lying because when they stop lying, there are some things that they're going to lose. That is why people that does evil, they want to continue doing evil because when they stop doing evil, there's something that they are not getting. And I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Can you tell somebody, reap in mercy? Somebody has to change. Something has to be changed for us to be able to reap in mercy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life. But many just took that literally. They would say, I believe in Jesus. They're still lying. They say, I believe in Jesus. They're still practicing hatred. They're still hating people. They say, I believe in Jesus. They're still jealous. They say, I believe in Jesus. They're still backbiting. Every gossip that you want to know about Atlanta, just call them and they can tell you either from the state governor to the lowest person they know all of this gossip i pray that god help us in the name of jesus psalm 51 17 said god needs a contrite heart a broken spirit god doesn't doesn't need proud people if you are proud you don't need god because exactly you've already accumulated one of the values of god so if you are if you are god you don't really need god i pray that god help us in the name of jesus so let us go on. It is time to seek the Lord. When is time to seek the Lord? Now. Let us make the change. Hosea was saying something about the Israelites. And it, when I began to read it, I was like, God, help us. Because Hosea for things, he called the Israelites a, 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 a backsliding, a backslider. Because they have that backsliding mentality. Hosea 4.16. Uh, if you see it, you can read. If not, we'll move on. For Israel slideth back. For Israel slideth back. Uh -huh. As a backslider hither. As a black slider ether. You know, when you... Have you... It's like you're taking a donkey out. Or maybe here, let's use a horse. You're supposed to be... And all of a sudden, the horse just stopped and stopped moving. You know, there's no way you can go forward. Many people are like that. When, they, when God is trying to take them to a place and God says go, they will just say, <coughs> and they will stop. They will not move. Because they know that once they go through the process that God wants them to go through, they will be changed. They don't want to change. So they are always backsliding. When they do right a little bit, they are forced to go back because they, are, they did not steal their heart. They did not break, they did not break that fallow ground. They are not ready for the change. Uh-huh. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in the large place. See that, man. That is why God sometimes would give people more ways to do the evil that they're doing. Hallelujah. If you say you don't want to do good, then whatever you have is what God will increase. Is that not it? 
And that's why I tell people when you want to go for anointment in Celestial Church of Christ, make sure that your heart is right. Make sure that you are changed. Because if you go for anointment in this church and you are an adulterer and you go for anointment, you will have more ways. You, God will give you more ways to do more adultery. That is it. It is whatever that you have that can increase. So if you used to steal and you don't change and you go and they give you anointing, you'll be anointed more. I pray that that will not be our case in the name of Jesus. It was my mentor that told me that Baba Bada was explaining. He said, you don't, you, what you bring is what God had on. So if you bring, if you plant righteousness, God will add unto your righteousness so that you can receive mercy. But when you bring unrighteousness, why do you want to reap mercy? Why do you want to reap righteousness? It is what you plan that you, that you harvest, right? Hallelujah. Are you getting confused? Whatever you plant is what you reap. It's as simple as that. So what you bring to God is what God would anoint for you. Unless if you have a change act, when you plant apple, you don't go there and say, I want banana. It's not going to happen. If you plant pineapple, you don't go there and say, Papa, it's not going to happen. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you tell somebody God is ready to bless you? It is time to seek the Lord. And the last part said, till he comes. Hallelujah. When you start, the issue with man is when we start to do good and we don't see the result immediately, then we'll stop doing good and go back to what we used to do before. But the word of God here said, you need to continue to do it until God shows up. Until you begin to see the blessing that you need. Many will go to a church for something. Their purpose, just like the song we read, they go for something. Once they get to that church and it's a week, two weeks, three weeks, and they don't get it, they will go out of that church and find another church. But the word of God said what? You need to be consistent until some, some people, God is just trying them to see how they will do. Because God is a God that watches our hearts our action, our patterns. Many of us are Oliver Twist. We just want to come, take, and then go. God is not that kind of magician. If God truly really loves you, he will test you. And if you go through that test, humbly, he will bless you. I pray that God bless us in the name of Jesus. So we need to be consistent until God shows up and rain what on us. is righteousness. Many of us, many people, not us, and not any one of us, many people have missed their blessing because of that. They were supposed to be obedient in the part that they have for six months. They did it for five and a half months, and because they didn't get it, they, they left. Now, did the blessing go anywhere? No, the blessing is still there, but they are gone. How can they receive it? No, God, God would not be following around with all that. There's an appointed place that is chosen for you. Imagine a time like this. Is it not the time that we're supposed to seek God? But how many people are actually seeking God now? People will wake up every day to look at uh, what ways can I avoid COVID? How can I go about COVID today? That's what they do every day. They don't even go to the maker of life and say, God, I need you to sustain me. I need you to protect me. I need you to guide me. And when things go wrong, those are the kind of people that want to call and be like, ah, can you pray for me? Can you do this? I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. We that are looking unto God. What did the word of God say? Let us not be discouraged. In 878. We that are looking unto God. Let us never be discouraged. We shall all share in the blessing by the grace of our God. Honor. So, if you are not discouraged, if you are persistent, if you keep sowing righteousness,
Just because you sow righteousness to somebody and they mocked you or they say wrong thing to you, that should not stop you from sowing righteousness into another person. Let that person go. It is him and God. Sow into another person. Sow into another person. Sow into another person. So that you can reap in mercy. So that God can come and shower his righteousness on you. And that will be our case in the name of Jesus. Another thing that takes us away from God is in 7.4. Hosea 7.4. Adultery. Impurities. Sometimes we allow into ourselves impurities. Things that are not of God. When they say to we Celestians, there's a purpose they tell us not to wear black, not to wear red. It's not that when you wear black, you're not going to go to heaven. It's not that when you wear black, you're not going to go to heaven. No, that's not the case. It's for a spiritual protection. So as to avoid any debt. So as to avoid poverty. So let's say you ch now choose to always wear black every day. That's your issue. That's not going to affect anybody. These rules are there for we to be acceptable before God. Not to be acceptable into salvation. If you are unclean and you go to the altar of God. Who is going to punish you is God. For your uncleanness. And it's going to be yours. That, that does not ask anything with you going to heaven. It's for your acceptance before God. I pray that God give us understanding in the name of Jesus. So if you really want to reap in mercy and you want the showers of God, you have to stay away from impurities. You can write it down, Odia 7.4. And one of the things that affected the Israelites is in, just open that Odia 7, verse 8. And I want somebody to read that. Ephraim. Yes. That he have mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Can you look at that? Sit down, man. Indifference. Let's say somebody wants to make a vanilla and a chocolate cake or whatever mixed together. But instead of mixing it, whatever, you just pour in each thing. You pour vanilla. You pour it like that. You didn't turn it. You didn't do anything. Is it going to come out right? That's the way some people are. Indifference to the word of God. They hear it on the right side, it flies out the left. I've been in a church that it does not matter how strong the word of God is. When you ask this man, what did they speak today? He will tell you something that only suits him. That is the only thing that you hear him say. Like the message of today, you will not hear anything like adultery, fornication. You just hear they said blessing is coming. That is what would you will hear from this man that I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Every spirit of indifference, we need to take it away. So as to suit God. So that we that are looking unto God. So that we can get this blessing. And the blessing will come to us in the name of Jesus. If we look at that 7 verse 16. They return. Yes. But not to the most high. When most people want to return. Something even go wrong, you want to return to God. Do you know most people don't even return to God? Uh huh. They are like a de deceitful bow. They are like a deceitful arrow. Let's 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 sit down. Something goes wrong. Instead of you to return to God, then you're calling. Hey, prophet, how can you help me? Oh, hey, pastor, how can you help me? Oh, hey, evangelist, how can you help me? Oh, hey, Baba, how can you help me? Oh, then you are not actually returning to God. You're being deceitful. And that will take us to the second Bible lesson. Revelation chapter 14. Because all of this is pushing us towards the end. The happenings now is telling us that the end is so close. If your heart is not prepared, your sowing cannot bring forth mercy. Revelation chapter 14. Somebody stand up. Revelation chapter 14. I uh, read from verse 1. Then I looked. Yes. And behold, yes. a lamb standing on Mount Zion. Yes. And with him, 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven, uh -huh. like the voice of many waters. Yes. And like the voice of loud thunder. Y yes. And I heard the sound of harpies playing their harps. Yes. They sang as if 
as if it were a new song before the throne. These are the people that has the name of God on them. They were singing harmonious song, new song, uh huh. These before the four living creatures yes. and the elders. Mm -hmm. And no one could learn that song except the hundred and No one could learn except who? The hundred and forty four thousand uh -huh. who were redeemed from the earth. Yes. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones that are not defiled. These are the ones that are virgins. You see, every time, I want you to understand something. Every time Hosea goes out to bring his wife back in, she becomes new to him. Every time that Christ draws you in, you're becoming new to him. But when you go back again, you're being defiled. When you come back, you become new because the old things has done what? Pass away. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. So how many times do we want to go out, become a new creature, go out again, become a new creature? Do you know there's going to come a time like Goma that that privilege will not be given again? Uh huh. These are the ones who follow the lamp wherever he goes. Yes, you have to follow the lamp wherever he goes. Uh huh. These were redeemed from among men. Yes. Being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Yes. And in their mouth was in their mouth was found no deceit. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Hallelujah. In their mouth was found no deceit. deceit. Sit down. In their mouth was found no deceit. Many of us lie to each other. Deceitful bow. Deceitful arrow. Deceitful being. And it's just because the art itself, that art is already corrupted. If you want to fix anybody's health and the act is corrupted, there's no way you can fix the person's health. If, you, if somebody has a little headache right now, that little headache can affect even the toe. That's how when we leave our heart, not, if we don't take care of our spirituality, that is what we usually become. A fallow ground. And they will be struggling to make things right when we have not even fixed the origin of our life. The, the art itself has to be fixed first. If you want to love others, you have to first of all love yourself first. Make sure you are right. Then you can love others. If you are somebody, I, I know some people that they're thinking, even maybe something happened, they think, oh God, oh my enemy should just die right now. I, my enemy doesn't like this art. But that's all they, that would, they would say. Now, tell me, is, would, we, would it be hard for those person to wish somebody dead? It would not be hard because they're already wishing themselves dead. We need to restructure our thinking so that we can make heaven. I pray that we'll be able to make heaven in the name of Jesus. It is only those that has the mark of God. And those are the ones that waited until God showers righteousness. Many of us cannot wait. We are not patient enough. We would only come to God when God is needed. So we believe for every other thing God is not needed. We are in charge. You want to sleep, you believe you are in charge. Let God take his charge away one time. You want to eat, you believe you are in charge. You want to go out, you believe you are in charge. You know how to drive. You are a very good driver. Many that ask that knows how to drive, that doesn't even go to the limit, talk much of over the limit. They have accident. They are dead. Somebody somewhere will just do something and it's, everything will go wrong. I pray that things will never go wrong for us in the name of Jesus. So I want to beg us today. Let us not be like Goma. God is calling us to him today. If you are attending a church and you're getting mad about that church, God is telling you today, go to your church. If you are mad with your pastor, God is telling you today, there's no point getting mad with your pastor. Your pastor is not God. Your pastor is a man and a woman just like you. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you are mad about somebody that stepped on you in the church or that said something wrong to you, and because of that, you're denouncing God, the things that you're supposed to do with God, you are denouncing yourself of that reign of righteousness. 
you cannot fix people you cannot fix that church that you complain about without fixing yourself fix yourself fix your home then you can fix others and he told my dash of money told me like if i'm to give you if i tell you that i'm going to give you a nice cloth now your thought is to think about all the clothes that i've been wearing and if you can find that none of it is nice enough you know what i want to give you <coughs> is rubbish hallelujah i pray that god help us let us stand up on our feet <coughs> let us ask that god will come into us i want somebody to open second Thessalonians 3 5. we're going to use that that's going to be our prayer for the whole week second thessalonians 3 verse 5. second thessalonians 3 verse 5. are we there now yes. may the lord direct your hearts into the love of god i want you to pray every week use this Sec second thessalonians 3 verse 5 and ask god to direct your heart read that again may the lord do what now may the lord direct your heart into the love of god may the lord pray that god will direct your heart into god's love pray that god will direct your heart into god's love uh-huh and into the patience of christ and into the patience of christ into the perseverance of christ can we pray for that pray that god will direct your heart into his love and into Christ's patience, Christ's perseverance. Ask that the Holy Spirit will come into you, will direct you into God's love and into the perseverance of the saints, the perseverance of Christ, the patience of Christ. Let us go on our knees as we pray for that. Let's go on our knees. Ask that God will heal your heart, will break all those fallow ground, those fallow actions, those actions, those patterns, those thoughts that are destroying the coming of God's righteousness into our life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Jehovah. Jesus Christ. Holy Michael. Eternal rock of ages. You are the ahem that ahem. We have heard your word. Even the speaker is shivering. Because this word is speaking to myself as a person. And the listener also is looking unto you for a change. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would direct our heart into your love in the name of Jesus. The spirit to persevere. The spirit of understanding. The spirit to stay away from sin. Bless us with the spirit in the name of Jesus. We pray that we will not lose your love over our soul in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the answered prayer. We want to beg you, O God, at the end of our sojourn on this earth, grant us the grace to be with you, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Collection. <laughs>